All right. Hey guys, Patrick Garo with TAP TV. So today I'm gonna to take a look at the Double Star ARC 300. Now this is a 16 inch 300 blackout rifle with a pistol length gas system and a 16 inch barrel with a Seekings rail with a, which has M-lock at three, six and nine o'clock and Picatinny rail all the way along the top. You do get this kind of goofy muzzle brakey compensator thing that I'm not really sure is gonna work very well, but whatever. I've also mounted my Vortex Strike Eagle one to six variable scope on here. And um, kind of in this area, everything that you get is pretty much basic mil-spec AR. So you get an A2 grip, mil-spec trigger, a single-sided standard safety with some fancy paint on the other side, um, a standard bolt carrier, a standard uh, bolt latch on, or you know catch on there as well. Um, now the staking on the castle nuts not the best, but you know I mean it's obviously not a warfighty rifle. This is a recreational rifle. Uh, but you do get this really cool butt pad on here that kind of sticks to the end of a mil spec tube and just bolts right in. But uh, anyhow, let's load up some of that ammo that I got from Ventura Munitions and uh, get out there and see what the rifle will do. All right, so we've gotten some pretty good groups out of the ARC 300 from Double Star so far. So let's go ahead and uh, take some shots. I've got a four inch wide pepper popper that uh, is set at 100 yards and at 200 yards, I've got an eight inch plate. So I will probably miss the 100 yard target a lot more than I will the 200 yard target, but we're gonna have some fun anyway. So let's just jump right to it and take that 200 yard target. Oh, good hit, a little bit low. Another hit. Hit. Oh, hold that. Hit. Let's try slowing down a little bit, huh? There we go. There we go. So let's move on over to that 100 yard thing. There we go. Oh, there's a miss. Hey, last round, got a hit. Cool, so let's go through one more mag. I'll have to say, uh, the rifle is pretty light recoiling, and I wonder if that has anything to do with the compensator that they've got stuck on the end of this thing, which is pretty wicked looking, and when I pull it off to put a suppressor on it, you'll see what I mean. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the charging handle, I feel like, could use some work, maybe? But uh, other than that, it's a pretty cool little rifle and I'm surprised that I like it as much as I do. No, hit at 200. Transition to 100. Hit, 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 oh, miss, hit, 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 and then 200, oh, there was a miss, that was me, and again, what the hell, Patrick, there we go, all right, so we had like three misses out of the 30 rounds in that mag, uh, not terrible. So the optic and the rifle performed pretty darn well. Uh, this Samson handguard is doing an okay job at keeping heat at bay. So I like that. Um, overall, so ha happy so far. But there's one thing that we could make a little bit better is we could make it a little bit quieter. So let's go grab my suppressor, pop that weird uh, muzzle brake off. We'll show you that later. And uh, enjoy our ears not sweating for a bit. All right, so now we pulled the brake off. I've tossed my Silentico Omega on here, um, and you'll see that the brake is kind of goofy. See, it's pretty tall, but this is a 16-inch barrel. It actually extends into the handguard a little bit to give you that feel that it's kind of attached to the barrel, and you've got eh, maybe about an inch 
of uh, sheath that kind of covers the barrel. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it'd be a barrel shroud for about an inch to make this cool looking suppressor. And God, that's hot. Um, you know, it just uses a standard crush washer. Uh, actually, it might be a little bit thinner than your standard crush washer, which is kind of weird. Um, but anyhow, it does have standard, uh, you know, 5 8 by 24 threads on here, which means we can use my cam. Now, let's load some of this ammo back up. Uh, now, this is supersonic ammo. I'm saving the subsonic ammo for something that's going to be even quieter than this. But it'll still be fun to shoot. So we'll start at 200. After I put my glasses on, because blowback. I'm so used to shooting the precision rifles, and I know you guys yell at me for not wearing iPro in that, but when you're looking through a $3,000 scope, ruining it with $5 iPro uh, really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But uh, with a suppressed semi-auto, I think it might. All right, guys, so that's it for the Double Star ARC 300. Now, I gotta say, there are a couple things about this rifle that I really do like. The handguard is pretty good. It's M-Lock, which is nice. Um, you know, I had an issue with it when I took it out of the box and found that it was quite loose, so I had to tighten that up. Uh, the brake muzzle thing on here, it's not really a brake, it's more of a compensator. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. It takes a non-standard size wrench and it's kind of a pain to get off if you want to swap it over to a suppressor. So, I mean, there's that and like, I feel like it's unnecessary. There's no reason for there to be a, you know, three inch long piece of metal on the end of a 16 inch barrel other than to look cool. So I don't feel like it really has much of a purpose, but if you're into it, you know, have at it. Um, I do like this little stock thing that they've got on here because it's just, it's flat out the perfect length. It's pretty minimalist. Um, and it's just really kind of cool. Like I'm really pleased with it. It's got QD points in it. It's really cushy uh, because I mean, let's face it, 300 blackout is a little harder hitting than 556. Um, I mean, overall it's, it's, it's pretty darn good. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with that part. Uh, the charging handle is pretty good. Uh, it's, it's basically a standard mil spec charging handle with an upgraded latch. Uh, but that's cool, you know, it works. It, it definitely clears the way if you're running a scope like uh, this Vortex Strike Eagle on here. Now, um, other than that, it's a pretty basic AR in, in 300 Blackout, but it's done right. Um, you've got, you know, a, a pretty decently assembled rifle, and they've used a pistol length gas system on here, which is the right thing to do for 300 Blackout. Um, you know, because that's what it was really designed around. It was designed to sample the gas at the pistol uh, gas tube length. So that's what you have here. Um, and that kind of helps keep the handguard cool down here near the muzzle, which is nice uh, because I've shot other rifles where the gas block really heated the rifle up quite a lot to where it was hard to handle. Um, now we found that uh, it really does shoot pretty well at range, um, provided you're using all the same ammo. Because earlier I had two different, lots, uh, two different types of ammo in magazines and was running into subsonic rounds along with supersonic rounds and the subsonic rounds were falling way short whereas the you know regular velocity ammo was just hammering the crap out of the uh, target so i mean it worked pretty darn well i'm pretty pleased with it all in all i have to say not a bad rifle i wish that it had a slightly better trigger like maybe a nickel bore encoded one or something of that nature um, maybe wish it came with an MOE uh, grip because it seems a shame to put this great Seekings rail on here, this nice stock, and then ship it with an A2 grip. I feel like that's kind of an oversight personally. And the same goes for like the trigger. I feel like it's almost necessary for it to be nickel born at this point. Um, but anyhow, there you have it, the Double Star Arc 300. And if you're looking for one, head on over to our friends at ProxyBid, and I'm sure they've got all kinds of Double Star rifles that might fit your needs. See y'all later. Bye.